So, you want to make your own animated characters like this in DaVinci Resolve? Well, you have come to the right place. I'm going to walk you through the whole process of how I make character rigs in DaVinci Resolve. This is the same technique I used to animate my short film Scooby-Doo in the backrooms, which I animated all in DaVinci Resolve. So first off, I should say that this isn't a beginner's tutorial. Now it's not too complicated or anything, but I'm going to assume you know how to do basic things like navigate fusion and bring up the select tool menu. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out my beginner tutorials playlist right here. So step one, you need to draw your character. Now this is something that you can do in fusion using masks. Here's a video you can check out here if you want to go down that route, but it's much easier to do this in a dedicated drawing program like Illustrator or Affinity Designer. Now if you want a free option, you can use GIMP, which is what I use to draw my characters, because of the aforementioned freeness. Freedom? Whatever. Anyways, I can't really show you how to use GIMP because I barely know what I'm doing. It took me like 5 minutes to figure out how to move a picture. But if you do know how to use that type of program, that knowledge will definitely come in handy here. The most important thing is that the program you use lets you draw in layers, since this will be important for animating it. Like I mentioned in my video on animation, how rigged animation works is you draw the character, but every part that you want to move you draw as a separate object so that you can move them all separately. So when you're drawing your character, keep in mind what you want to move and draw that on a separate layer. For a simple character, I would recommend separating it into these parts you see on screen, but you can have more or less parts depending on what your animation will require. I'll have a link where you can download this character that I'm using if you want to follow along with me. Alright, so we're finally here in Fusion. Our first step is going to be to bring in our assets. So I can just bring that folder here, select them all, and just drag and drop them in. Now by default, this is going to make a lot of merge nodes, and we do not need any of these. So I can just select them and delete them. So first of all, we need to label our nodes so that we don't get confused. So I'm going to hit 2 and bring this to the screen, and it says right here that this is the eyes, so I'm just going to hit F2 and rename this eyes, and I'll just go through renaming all of these. It's a little tedious, but you gotta do it. Alright, so now that we have all our parts in Fusion, let's start rigging this. So that it's not overwhelming, we're going to do this in sections. We'll start with rigging the limbs, then the head, and then I'll show you how to connect all the controls into one node. So to start, I'm going to bring down a background node, bring that to the screen, and I'm just going to bring down the alpha all the way. This is just to set the resolution of the project and to have a kind of base to start at. So I'm going to start with the torso. I will merge that over my background, bring that to the screen. So first we're going to rig the arms. So I'm going to find my upper arm, my lower arm, and my hand. Bring those over here. Now the order that we merge these together matters. Everything needs to move with the arm, but the hand also needs to move when the elbow moves. So I'm going to merge the hand over the lower arm, and then I will merge that over the upper arm. And then finally I can merge all this over the torso. Now let's make it be able to move. So after everything, I'm going to add a transform node, just hitting shift space to bring up the select tool menu. Now we're going to control the movement of the arm with the angle slider, but you can see if I move that now, well it's moving from the center so the whole arm is moving. What we want to do is change the pivot control. You see if I start moving with this, it moves this little green X in the middle. So this X, the pivot, is where it's going to rotate from. So if I bring it down here, it'll rotate from that point. That point isn't going to move, but everything else will. So let's just bring this up to our shoulder where we want it to move from. Now it's moving from the shoulder and it looks like the arm is rotating. So now we can do the same thing after the elbow. I'm going to add a transform and this time I'm going to move the pivot to the elbow. If I want a better look I can bring this to the screen so I can tell at what part I want it to be from. Now we can move the elbow. And finally, I will do the same with the hand. So now we can move the arm, the elbow, and the wrist. Now that was fairly simple, but what we just did is the basic idea of rigging. You add a transform node and put the pivot at where you want it to move from. That's all it is. Now that we know the basics of rigging, we can do some more advanced stuff with the hand. So you might have noticed that there were four drawings of the hand, and I numbered them one through four, so that when I brought them into Fusion, it automatically brings it in as an image sequence. So if I go through the frames, I have four different hands that I drew in case I want to move them and have the hand in different positions. So if I press play, they'll just cycle through and disappear. Now I want to be able to control what hand is showing and be able to animate that. If you've seen my mouth animation video, what we're going to do is the exact same method as that. After the hand, I'm going to add a time speed node, bring the speed to zero, 
and set the interpolation mode to nearest. Now, if I move the delay slider, I can choose what frame the hand is on. Now you might have noticed that I only drew one arm and that's to save time because once you've rigged one arm, you've basically rigged both arms. So what I can do is I can copy and paste that, bring that over here and just merge that on top of everything. But now it just added the same arm in the same place, which is not what we're looking for. So I can add another transform node, hit the flip button here and just move this into place. Now we have two arms, but we only had to go through the process of rigging one arm. In the immortal words of Scrooge McDuck, work smarter, not harder. Now the process of rigging the legs is exactly the same. Now it is worth mentioning that once you have the legs rigged, you want to merge them before the torso, so that the torso will be on top of the legs. All right, now that we've got the limbs rigged, let's move on to the head. So I'm just gonna grab the rest of my assets here, draw them up over here to the front of my note tree. So to start, I'm going to take my face and my eyes and just merge them together. Then I will add a transform node after the eyes. So now if I move around the transform node, it makes it look like his eyes are looking around. Now how I designed this character, his eyes are just dots. If you wanted to rig a character whose eyes have white in them, I would recommend having the head, the whites, and the pupils as their own objects. That way you can move the pupils separately from the whites. Now I wanted him to be able to blink, so I drew two versions of his eyes. Eyes open and eyes closed. Now I want a way to be able to animate them. We can do this pretty easily with the dissolve node. So I'm just gonna drag these back, add a dissolve node, and plug my close eyes into this. Now with the slider here, we can choose which input it's showing. So eyes open, eyes close, and we can make them blink just like that. This and the time speed method are two ways to switch between different pictures. As a rule of thumb, if you want to switch between two assets, use the dissolve node. And if you need to switch between more than two assets, use the time speed. Now let's add the eyebrows. Now if we look at the asset, you can see I drew them together, but I want to be able to move them separately. So I can add a polygon node, drag that down, and just draw a shape around one of the eyebrows. Now I can drag this into the eyebrows. So now we just have one. Now to get the other one, I can select them, copy and paste them. Then in this polygon, I can hit invert. So now we have the other eyebrow. So now I'm going to add a transform node after that and merge it of the rest of our face. And in the transform node, I'm going to bring up the pivot, move that to the middle of the eyebrow. So now I can move the eyebrow up or down and I can play with the angle to give him different expressions. And I will do the same with the other eyebrow. For the mouth, I already have a video going into detail on how to make that, which you can check out right here. You would just merge that mouth over the head here. So now I'm going to merge the head on top of everything. Then I'm going to add a transform node and bring that to the head, kind of right here in the neck and now I can make his head rotate. Now another good use of the dissolve node is being able to make his head turn. So right now his head is facing this way, but if we want to make him turn his head that way, we wouldn't have to rig a whole nother head. I can add a transform node, make sure it's not connected to anything, and I can drag our head into that there. Then in this transform, I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to move it into place so it's the right place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add another dissolve node hold shift and plug that between this here. Now I can plug our other head into that. And it looks like I need to adjust the location a little bit more. So now with the dissolve node, we can make him turn his head. Pretty nifty. Now at this point, we're technically done. The character is fully rigged, but it's not really efficient to animate now because every time you want to change something, you have to go searching throughout this whole big node tree, which is not very effective if you want to animate it. It would be really nice if we could, mm, I don't know, hypothetically connect all the controls to one node so we could have everything in one place. I think you see where I'm going with this. Thankfully, such a node exists and it's called the custom tool. So what I can do is add one and right off the bat, it has all these controls and sliders. And what do they do? Nothing, at least not yet. That's the beauty of the custom node. It's a blank slate that you can connect other nodes to. So to start, let's go to the configuration tab go under these number controls. The number controls are these slider things we see here. So we can label these for all the joints that we want to rotate. Now there are only eight sliders by default, which is not enough, but we can fix that in a minute. 
Now I can move on to the point controls, and these I can use for any parts that I need to move around the transform node, like the eyes or the eyebrows. And we don't need this last point here. Then we don't need any of these LUT controls, so I can uncheck all of these. Now we can go to the controls tab and see all of our controls right here. So we still need more controls for the right wrist and obviously the legs and all that, but to keep this video from lasting forever I'm not going to worry about the legs, but it's the same method to add as many controls as you want. So I'm going to right click our custom tool, hit edit controls, this brings up the edit control menu. This lets you add your own controls to any node. So I'm going to name this one right wrist, and I want this type to be a number control. I'll have it be under the controls tab, and I want it to be a screw control. Now I can just hit OK, and it added that control to our custom node. But this isn't the only control I want to add. I want to add controls for switching the hands and blinking the eyes and turning the head. So again, in our custom tool, I can right click, bring up the edit control menu. Now this one I'm going to call left hand. Again, I want it to be a number control in the controls tab. And this time I want it to be a slider control. I'm gonna check integer, and I want the range to be from zero to three since I have four hand frames and fusion counts zero as a frame. So then I can just hit okay. And I will do the same thing for the right hand. Now for the blinking and head turn, I'm gonna add another control. This one I will name, I think, blink. Again, same as before, number controls. But this one, I want to be a checkbox control. So I can press that, okay. Now that adds a little checkbox, and I will do the same for the head turn. Now it's also worth mentioning that if you ever wanna edit the controls you added, you can right click it again, and in this ID area, you can search for the name of your control. So if I wanna edit the blink, press that, now I can change any of these controls in the blink and press OK when I'm done. All right, so now we have all these controls, but they still don't do anything yet. So let's connect them to the nodes. I'm gonna click on this button right here to pin it to the screen. So now we can open other node controls and our custom tool will stay there on the screen. So I'm gonna start with the point controls since those are the easiest to do. So I'll take the eyes transform. In the center, I'm gonna hit equals there, press enter. That'll bring up the expressions area. So I can drag out from this little plus connect it to the eyes of our custom tool. And now whatever the value is in our custom tool is what the eyes will end up being. And all of the point controls are the exact same as that. Now the angle controls are a little bit different. So I'm gonna go to the transform that controls our head. And in this angle, again, I'm gonna get equals and connect this to our head slider. But you see that if I bring it up, it's not actually doing much. It's moving really slowly. That's because we're working with angles, so the head thing is moving from 0 to 1 to 3 pretty slowly. But since we're working in degrees, that's super small and hard to see. So to fix that, in our control expression right here, I can add times 100, press enter. Now, when I move the head thing, it moves much more intuitively. Now, I do want to mention about the limbs that we duplicated. If we connect it to the control, like we did the others, if I move the slider this way, the arm moves in the opposite direction. This is because this arm is being flipped. So to keep things from getting too confusing while you're animating, in this expression, I'm going to add minus before everything. Enter, now it moves more like you expect it to. All of the limbs and things you need to move or rotate, you can connect just like I showed you here. The blinking and head turn, I can take this dissolve node, it equals just like everything else, and just drag and connect it to the blink checkbox. Now if I press this checkbox, it'll automatically switch between zero and one. And I can do the same with the head turn. Now for the hands, in the time speed, I can connect the delay to the hand slider, and now it's being controlled with our slider here. Once you go through and connect everything to its respective controls, you have a full completed rig ready for animation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, in about a week, I'm gonna have another video coming out where I show you how to take your animations to the next level using compositing. So if that's something you think you might be interested in, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you wanna see the full cartoon I made using this method and actually this rig, you can check it out right here.